So this is now step three of my project, which is creating my game res slash low res model and using the model. So this is going to be a fairly short video since I'm not doing a tutorial, I am doing a breakdown of it. So I'm just going to quickly go through the steps of what I did and the tips I would recommend for you guys to do. So here I brought in my decimated um, model from ZBrush into my uh, scene here, um, which is my UV clean. This is going to be my final scene that I did. So in the modeling phase, I actually was able to get away with just using my beveled project before I started working in ZBrush because I didn't do any major silhouette changes. So what I did was I made sure to check that everything was aligned um, with my high res and my game res. And so I am just going to bring in <clears throat> my um, flag high res just to show you what I mean by checking to see um, any major silhouette changes. So in this case, I did add this uh, clasps, these two clasps, and these wrinkles. So in this case, you can kind of look at it and be like, well, <clears throat> Trisha, this kind of looks like there is a, a major change. You don't really <clears throat> see this on your uh, low res or your game res. And in this case, I would say baking has gone pretty far, especially in Substance Painter. Um, and from past experience, uh, wrinkles, especially more like organic, um, shapes uh you can get away with a lot of um stuff uh you don't have to have it exactly on top of each other and you know have everything look fine i knew that with this much of a difference between these models i could uh be able to bake it without changing anything from the actual uh, original uh, game res piece. So I brought it in, made sure to look at every angle of my project to see if there was anything that was sticking out or any major silhouette changes. I did not see any of that, so I was able to give the okay and check off my game res for my bookcase. The next thing um, I did was check the metal, so I ended up deleting the high res um, from the scene, brought in my metal group from ZBrush made sure that everything was aligned correctly, made sure that anything, uh, that there wasn't any uh, weird silhouette changes, that was fine, so I gave it the okay, checked it off. The next step is preparing for uh, UVing. For this, all I do is I delete any unused edges that I don't need, and the next thing I did was delete any unseen faces in my project. So here, uh, an example of this is, um, this metal piece, you see, you aren't going to see the inside of this metal piece. So I deleted it because it saves on UV space as well as saving on poly count. The next step is UVing. And here you can see that I filled up my zero to one space more than 85%. I um, would recommend you guys to do this since this is me trying to make sure that I do a quote game optimized prop and in games you try to use up as much space as you can um, on your zero to one because you know textures are very expensive while working on a game. So here I made sure that I um, checked the textile density as frequently as possible. Um, for each group and made sure that they were exactly the same. Um, the only ones that I upped up was the props since I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any pixelation um, happening happening in my project. So what I did, I'm just going to give you a step of how I did it, was I grabbed my bookcase. I just grabbed the project or the uh, piece and then I went to automatic and it laid it out for me. Another thing I would tell you to do beforehand, which I forgot to mention, was make sure that you soften and harden your edges before you even start UVing. That will very much uh, determine how you will cut and sew your UV uh, shells. So after hardening and softening my edges, I took a piece of my group, did an automatic um, 
layout for it and then I just grabbed this piece and moved it over. The next thing I did was focus on the props. The props were the most time consuming uh, part of this whole entire uh, project for UVing. Mostly because of the fact that I had so many tiny details here. I had to make sure that I had all of this looking correct. I had to actually manually go in um, and sew and cut the pieces and actually do a camera base. I had to make sure that this part right here for the books were <clears throat> laid out correctly. I had to make sure that I unitized uh, this piece right here to... Um, make sure that there wasn't any distortion. So the tools that I mostly used in this project um, for UVing was the modify uh, tab, which was the unitized to be able to get that um, clean look on the UVs so it wasn't distorted or having any funky <laughs> look to it. The next one I did for tools was the smooth tool. Um, this is similar to the unfold. I just feel like I have a little bit more control on how much I can unfold or smooth out my UVs. The next uh, thing that I used in the UV toolkit was the textile density settings where I would be able to just get a um, textile density of one of these shells. So in this case, I just got this one and I used this one, this base, um, the textile density as the base for the rest of my project before I laid it out to make sure that I had everything um, in the same resolution. After doing that, uh, I usually use the Create for the automatic camera base and planer. I feel like those are the easiest ones to use. Um, it's nothing too crazy. Uh, after that, I use the Unfold uh, tab for Optimize and Unfold. This just helped mostly with the more rectangular shape, so it helped with the bookcase, um, it helped with the flag, and it helped with the scrolls. So, after showing you the tools that I used for this project, I separated each uh, section. So these are my bookcase, my metal, and my prop gr group. And all I did was grab everything, went to the layout, layout UV. And you can see here, it did a pretty good job of laying out my UVs. It um, used as much space as possible. It um, did more than 85% of the... Um, area so I would count that as a win the only complaint that I would give is that I really don't know where a lot of the pieces are um, and this is just personally for me I like to keep my UV shells with my groups in certain areas so as you see in the original I have my bookcase area here and I know exactly where the pieces are I have my prop groups in between the areas that I could squeeze it in and for my metal group they are all sectioned off in areas so they're not like wildly everywhere they're here and here so this part is not required I think that the layout is pretty well for what I did um, for the one that I use as an example um, but for me personally like I mentioned a billion times beforehand I love to keep myself organized so in this case I wanted to make sure that everything was grouped together and this also did help me while texturing the next step I would recommend you to do um, and something I mentioned beforehand is remembering what you mirrored over. So in this case, I remember that I mirrored this piece. I remember that I mirrored one of these legs. I remember I mirrored this and I remember that I mirrored the metal part right here. When you ving and you know that you mirrored something over and you know that you have one piece correctly done and now you gotta go with the second one and you forgot how you do your steps, all you have to do is click on this, uh, or let me show it on this one, click on this, click on this, go to mesh, and transfer attributes. This will literally save you so much time if you have pieces that are duplicates or mirrored over on the other side. Honestly, all you have to do is just transfer the UV um, attributes over and you don't have to worry about that anymore. But um, for pieces where you would want to stack them on top of each other, what you can do um, in this case is just for this piece right here, you can see that I have it in the zero to one space, but this piece right here, I actually moved over to the other side. Ignore that part right there, but I did move it over on the other side. So all I have to do is grab this. Um, I know that those shells right there 
are here. So all I have to do is grab this, go all the way to the move, make sure it's at one and just click this button over and it will be in the exact same position as you see here. It's just in this area right now. So I would recommend you to do this. Actually, I wouldn't recommend you to do this. This is something you're going to have to do uh, because in Substance Painter, I haven't found a workaround of this, but if you try to stack UVs in Substance Painter, you will not be able to paint on it. It just doesn't recognize which shell it is. So to make it easier on you, um, just move the one of the shells over if you plan on having one side or just one side texture and having the exact same thing mirrored over. Um, after you do that, after you finish your texturing, you can go back to your uh, game res model that you did um, and all you have to do is just grab those pieces, move it over again to the zero to one space, um, use whatever render um, you're using and it will recognize both sides. It won't do the weird substance painter thing where it just won't paint on anything. It will recognize it and it will apply the textures on both sides. Uh, after I'm done UVing, I <laughs> uh, make sure I grab it one more time. I look through everything to make sure that nothing is overlapping. I don't see anything overlapping. I make sure that if there's any space um, available, I move it over. Um, but I see that there is no real overlapping on this project. Another thing that I uh, did that you are more than welcome to do is since I knew that with this flag, and then you can see it here, I knew with this flag the main focus was going to be the front part, I went behind, grabbed this UV shell, and just sized it down. And this is to create more space within my zero to one space. You're more than welcome to do this. I did not want to delete this face right here because if you rotate it enough you are going to need to see that face right there so that is all I did nothing too crazy um, you can do this with the rest of the pieces I think I also did it with the back piece over here um, and then some of the pieces over here I knew that I was gonna keep them here and they are very noticeable so I just made sure to keep that there so after I was done UVing I went back to my Maya standard and I started naming everything. So if you remember the naming convention that I did in ZBrush, it is the exact same way that I did it here. The only difference is then having a underscore high. Um, I have an underscore low. The reason why I did this is because in Substance Painter I knew I was going to bake uh, by mesh name. Tips that I would recommend you to do if you are struggling with UVing is look up tons of tutorials. There are in-depth tutorials on UVing. There's in-depth tutorials on uh, layouts, the way uh, the tools work, as well as doing um, and figuring out your textile density. Um, another thing I would recommend you to do is something that my teachers did for us was give us a model that we didn't have to texture, we didn't have to model. They just gave us a model and they told us UV it and we would UV it and we would get graded on the UVs. I think that's a great way to learn how to uh, UV. So those are some tips I would recommend for you to do if you are not confident in UVing. So after that, after naming my groups, the next thing I did was export it. Um, all I did was just grab this, went to file, uh, export, found the file or folder that I have in my hard drive and my closet of a young warrior folder, um, made sure that I named it bookcase low or closet low and then I was prepared to go into substance painter.